in chat. We've got our tickets. Part three. Ah, okay. Let's see here. Where are we? So I was telling this story just a minute ago to everybody. But you can see the... Here's a good example of the casing stones. I think this is the... Let's see... Eastern side, maybe? Or what? Uh, yeah, eastern side, I think, of the Great Pyramid here. And you can see the sockle next to the casing stones. Of course, there's massive monuments above us. Jordan Boncho, what's up, man? Yeah, we're firing it up again. We've got our tickets, what we need to do, and uh, making our way over to the Middle Pyramid now via the Great Pyramid. So yeah, you can take, it's, cr it's, it's crazy the number of, uh, of, of synchronicities in this, you know, the, with, with the, the, the longitude that's encoded in the, in the sockle versus the perim, like the, the perimeter of the Great Pyramid at the edge of the casing stones, kind of here where my foot is, versus the perimeter of uh, using the sockle is the, you ratio those against each other, it's the exact ratio of latitude to longitude on the planet. Um, you know, the, the um, I think is it, what is that, processional number, 43,200, the, the, the perimeter of the Great Pyramid times 43,200 is the equatorial radius of the Earth. The height of the Great Pyramid at the center times 43,200 is the polar radius of the Earth. So it's kind of like a model of the Northern Hemisphere. And if you take the perimeter of the Great Pyramid, it's at the equator it, and you measure it out, that's that's the point that, that any one point on the equator spins and turns in exactly two seconds. So that length, the length of the perimeter of the Great Pyramid is the length that any point on the equator turns in two seconds. So um, there's a lot to this. <laughs> And Kyle was saying that also the the sides aren't exactly equal in length. They're slightly skewed, but they're skewed in the same way that the grid squares on the Earth are skewed. So if you imagine a, a grid over the Earth, like the latitude slightly narrows in the further north or south you go from the equator. That same skewing is represented by the difference in the length of the great of, of the sides of the Great Pyramid. So it's whoever built it had some pretty advanced knowledge. So it's ancient times how the Well, that's the question. That's that's exactly uh, why I think that even you know you, we need to rewrite history one way or the other. Whether you think if it was the dynastic Egyptians or the Egyptians who built this, then they're vast. They, they knew vastly more and they had vastly more capability than we attribute them with. Right? They had knowledge of the earth and understanding the longitude things. No joke. Um, in our civilization, we didn't get to measure longitude accurately until the end of the 18th century, James Cook's second voyage of discovery. By the time we could actually have chronometers accurate enough to keep time so we could we could measure longitude. So somebody knew this though, back in the very early times, you also have all of the maps of the ancient sea kings, the Piri Reis map, the Aronto Finis, fin, Finis map, those that reflect accurate longitude. Um, and none of this knowledge we credit to the ancient Egyptians. So. If they did it, then we still have to rewrite our perceptions of them. But I think there's significant evidence that suggests that they didn't do it. And they inherited it. They inherited parts of the monument. They inherited culture or they inherited knowledge uh, and architecture. So, so here's a good example of the sockle right here, where Yusuf is. <laughs> So imagine that this, this little piece over here was going to have another stone lock accurately too. Just imagine a detail like this is like hello man three millimeters. <laughs> That's right. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Three millimeters details are taken care of in a structure that is built in yeah. Like how many thirteen acres? Yeah. <laughs> thirteen yeah. acres of land. So what do, you, what do you think about this erosion on these roads? Wind and sand is usually what causes the horizontal erosion. But wasn't this buried in sand for thousands Andre, of years? Andre, what's up, man? The bottom part of it? The bottom, yes, it was. But actually, the reason that this survives because it was under rubble. So if it was, so because it probably was exposed also for thousands of years. 
If you find that those are taken, that means those were exposed. And the Thailand Heaven was to I mean, to me, it looks like it looks like the water no, erosion look, in our in our part of the world. It looks like water erosion. To, to, because I see, we see that on our hillsides. If it's uh, if it's water like crushing like this, that's we. I don't know. So you see all the all the details in the floor. This was all tiles. There was all limestone tiles on top of this, and you're seeing the marks from where they were locking the tiles into the bedrock. So they were carving the bedrock, and then these tiles like three-dimensionally kind of lock into the bedrock and with each other and all the tiles have long since been quarried and recycled the outlines aren't square right do you think yeah. some of the outlines hint to sort of there having been you know a function or some, perhaps a, a, a saw or a machine or something where they may have they don't want it to vibrate and kind of drift as they... they well, it, cer it, it, cer it certainly seemed very important to, to really lock the structure into the bedrock. So that, that seems to indicate that maybe it was resonating. Who knows, right? That, but it seemed important that, that it was solid, that it was super solid. You can tell from the design it was important that it has to have a function. Yeah, yeah. They took, a, they took a lot of time and effort to really lock the stuff into the bedrock. And in fact, on some sides, you can see some of the... Some of the blocks are actually shaped from the bedrock. A few. We'll see more of that over in this second pyramid. But, yeah. Top chat. But this line, where, 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 yeah, right. I mean, like inside the pyramid. It's definitely a lot more wind and sand erosion. I think more sand erosion on the bottom layers than the top, I guess. The sand's going to flow along at the bottom more. Yeah, just a guess, I don't know. I'm not buying it. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> the wind and sand. <laughs> yeah. That's all we said. Hello? Hello? Some of the erosion on the third pyramid complex and the middle pyramid complex. Susan Moore, the geologist, have said, have said what they are saying, that this looks like water erosion. What would bring water up here? I'm only going off of what the geologists say where I live, right? Yeah. They say it was water erosion, and, but I'm saying it just looks like this. Definitely beer weather. Yeah. I don't know. There will be some beers it's later tonight, that is for sure. <laughs> the one around the Sphinx enclosure. Yeah. You've earned a beer at this point. I remember and he was talking about the wind and sand causing the effect horizontally. <laughs> and the weak are sitting in the bedrock. Is it? Yeah, I can show to keep it reconnecting. Huh. Yeah. Are you on the Wi-Fi? No, I haven't turned it. Jump on the Wi-Fi. Yeah, so I wanted the same thing about our build side. It should be on. Is it not on? I thought Kyle, you told Kyle to leave it off. No, I said just leave it. I said just run it. Just run it. Or wave action, as you were saying. Power button. How do you turn it on? I don't know. How do you turn this on, chat? Oh, well, there it is. There's the power button. Yeah, I don't know if you see it. it. Oh, yeah, it should light up. It's pretty bright. Shadow. Oh, there it is. And I think that's a command or something. Yeah, okay. And the password, I'm going to tell you guys the password too because you're not going to need to be coding. Capital M, capital O, that's six zeros. If ever you come on a tour, that's the Wi Fi password. Do you want me to hold something? You got one hand. Sort of. Yeah, yeah. Hold the phone upside down. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Uh, Have you Wi-Fi into it? Or are you on mine? Get me! Get me! Get me! It does have fossils in it. All of this is fossils everywhere in the in the bedrock. It's all ancient seabed. You'll see fossils everywhere in the stone here. Do you see the? Do you see that other access point? Okay. What is it? A Kemet something else? Kemet two. Yeah. Get you guys a look at the middle pyramid here. Try and catch up on the chat again. All right, there we go. Sorry about Copper that. chisels here, right? <laughs> It should, yeah. Just not inside the pyramid. Right. We'll get there. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, let's check. 
check this out, guys. I'm in, I'm in Snake's way here, but. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I think we're back. Yeah, we're back. It was a little, uh, I think my access point back here. I'm using my phone now, so I'm using my data on my AT&T. So all this, uh, the the happened after the I have, have data. Shipped. Just the wind can do that. Yes, yours, yeah. Wind and sand some other. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite the eroded piece here. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Dixon. I've been streaming all day. I'm trying, having connection issues at the moment, so we'll see how it goes. at and Well, it is, it's going through. I mean, it's at and day package, so it's... We're on the local cell phone network here. Let's see how we go. Sorry for any connectivity issue, guys. I can't really help it. Yeah, I think my battery died on that, my little Wi-Fi. Do you need the charger? No, it's all right. I'm on my phone now, so we'll see how it goes. Okay. I'm on my data. Did you guys bring a battery pack or? Uh, Come here. Let's go. Come, Come on, guys. Herding cats begins. Yeah. We haven't even actually started. Started the tour. Yeah, there'll be three times as many people. Right. Well, two times. I mean, it's half the tour group, pretty <laughs> yeah. much. Fifteen people. Peak, you'll be in there in December. Good on you, man. Ten bucks. Is interested? <laughs> this is my second job as a hustler here. <laughs> Okay, you can start to see this is what's interesting here once this bus goes by. Huh? Totally lost. What is it? <laughs> yeah, better connection from a top that thing. Been on a camel now. You ain't gonna see me on a camel, my friend. There'll be no camel riding for me. So what you can see over here. You guys can start to see the, the, uh, you can see the, uh, the edge of the, uh, bedrock. So where they cut down on that, on that western side of the, uh, of the pyramid, right? So this is, have a good time. I got it, thank you. All right, we get up here. So this is, they built this pyramid in the side of a hill. So over there is the sloping angle of the bedrock. And where they, they, they've had to cut it down, that's the uh, western side, then this is the eastern side, and they've had to build it up. And you can see the tiles, like some of these blocks, where they've had to build up the plateau, the edge of it, to, to, to lift basically the edge of it. There's some more shopping going on here. This is use of supporting the locals. <laughs> no, I don't need the camera. Camel. No, no, don't take this. Guys, don't want to buy Oh, harassed by a camel. Five dollars fridge magnets, that's right. Ten bucks for a bag and a, and a hat. A basket, a fresh, freshly weaved basket. And uh, only if the camel pictures are free until you take them. Nice to meet you. And this is the fridge magnets. 
Watch some comments in action here. Hey, buddy. What's happening? All right, we're going to walk over here away from the, the commerce, and I'll show you what I was talking about. They're hustling over there. All right. <laughs> Get out of there. So, right, looking forward, you can see that western edge. And again, it's like 30 feet where they lowered it. And they had to build it up on this side. So there's giant tiles in the ground. And some of these you can see from over here. This is the action. <laughs> yep. They poop everywhere. You did end up buying a cat. I have a cat, so your argument is invalid. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Jesus explaining pretty much what he's talking about. So you see that? The western side, so it's cut into, so if the sloping angle of the bedrock. Yeah, that would be where the wall goes this way. The crow, uh, this is the gate, no, the, the wall gate of the crow is over there. So oh, they yes. they cut the they had to cut the bedrock down like 30 feet on the back side on the western side because this was all a sloping hill. And then here on the eastern side, they had to build it up. They put tiles in the ground and like these huge big bedrock tiles to actually, and it would have, if they just moved the pyramid like 50 meters that way, yeah. they wouldn't have had to do that. But yeah, that's huge, that huge amount of work down there. Let's go. We can go in, into the thing over here. These pieces you are working on right now, it's not bedrock. These are tiles. These are actually constructed. And they were very similar to what you saw front of the pyramid of Kufu. Yep. I like puzzle pieces interlocking together, but on a much bigger scale. Yeah. yeah. Some of them, we measured one yesterday, was like 190 tons, yeah? How thick? Like maybe two, three meters? Two, three meters, yeah. yeah. But these are the rectangular shapes over there. Yeah. Here, these are random shapes like puzzle as well. Yeah, and you can, you can, it's more or less, it's like 2.2 tons per Look square meter. This one, for example, of course, put in mind thousands of years of deterioration, but imagine these are same interlocking pieces like the tiles we just saw over there. Oh, but these rock. are like six, seven times bigger, if not ten times bigger. Follow the lines. You can See it? achieve this work on a smaller scale because usually when you're trying to lock, there are pieces that is not fitting together. Then you're going to remove the no, the limestone the blocks. And keep yeah, so we measured one yesterday, here, roughly 190 tons. There's a bunch the of them in the 150 to 160 ton course. range. The size. Size yeah. does matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Yeah. Somebody. Here is the entrance to the main. And we will, anybody want the bridge magnet? For God's sake! <laughs> Fresh magnets for $5. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chaotic up here. It's like I said, it's the weekend for the locals. A lot of local traffic. We're going to walk over to the entrance, go in here. I'll probably have to, when we go in, I'll have to probably roll down on the stream. Um, but something you can see over here too is like, this is the middle, this middle pyramid's megalithic. Like look at some of the size of some of these blocks. They make it up much bigger than the the blocks in the Great Pyramid. But the other thing you see here is that the bottom two courses were cased in granite, right? So this is this all of this stuff here, this is all granite. And it's all remnants from quarrying. You see the, the marks from quarrying? That, that distinctive dash line where they would, they would carve uh, like these little divots into the rock and then they'd hammer wood into it and wet it and then try and split the stone. Uh, this is all the remnants from the quarrying. You can kind of see the angle, the original angle on one of these casing stones here. So these were the whole two bottom layers were, were cased in granite. And then all, you, all you have here is this remnants of granite, tons of it. There's a few more granite casing stones actually in place down here near the entrance as more commerce <laughs> takes place. Pretty place for common, commerce. 
<laughs> what a shame. Well, so, you know, the funny thing is, um, this was destroyed in the, by Ramses II. Like, there's, a, there's an inscription over there on that wall that talks about the quarry master who was essentially using the middle pyramid as a quarry. Uh, and they weren't quarrying limestone, they were quarrying this granite. So a lot, a lot of this work was done by the, the late periods in the, of the Egyptians themselves, particularly Ramses II. And you can find in some of his structures, a lot of the granite from this pyramid is, is actually located there. So they were, they were recycling then. I mean, they were recycling the fourth dynasty. We did this video yesterday that I'll release at some point. Shows the example. Come on. Let's go. So, so these the bottom two courses were casing encased. This is all rubble from um, from uh, from recycling. Mm -hmm. So the bottom two layers were the casing stones were made of granite. They so just ripped them out. Well, so covered them down to Cairo, and these were ones. The well, no, this was behind. this was actually done by uh, even Ramses the second. Like so, there's oh, really? well, there's an inscription on this wall back here. That talks about a quarry master who was doing this work for seconds, and he was using it as a granite quarry then. So they, they, they were recycling this granite. This is literalness and rubble and and waste pieces from all of the quarrying that happened here. All and this is all magic, like high high quality granite. Yeah, it looks very. All came from from Aswan, but you can see you see these well in very large chunks of of, of quartz. So any of the any of the like the, the well, the, the clear stone is quartz. The black stuff's mica, and then there's the there's there's it's all in a six point five to seven uh, stone. But this is like the dash. You see these dash lines? You see that in a lot of these stones. This is this is how they would quarry it. They carve these quarry marks in here. Hammer wood in here. Wet the wood, and and it would expand, and then they'd hammer it with stone chisel to try to split the block this way. So you see that on a ton of these blocks. You will see these dash lines. I can already see them up here. And this is literally all the pieces, the rubble that was left over. Um, on the, there's a couple of the casing stones still in place over here, more or less, as we go towards the entrance. But yeah, this is an insane pyramid. Like it's much more megalithic. I mean, just look at the size of the blocks in the wall here. Like huge compared to the Great Pyramid. And then, uh, and then you see how they, they had to work the bedrock, right? You see the natural slope of the bedrock. So they this is on. They put this inside, built it into a hill. So you had to dig that side down 30 feet. So that's why all these big, massive tiles of limestone are, are over here. So, you know, it's quite anything to try and build a pyramid like this. Yeah. Whoa, wind noise. Sorry, guys. Yeah, Chuck's got the answers now. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go look at some of these casing stones. I hope the quality is still okay, guys. I'm now streaming on my phone, so we'll see. There Obviously, they built the pyramid with water. Yeah. Or, or camel piss. This could be camel piss. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, I thought that was the uh, working man's beer here. Working man's beer, yeah. It's nothing but the recycling yep. process. Yep. It's not the original builder's tool marks. This is the tool marks of... Did they use the wooden blocks with water? Yeah. This is, yeah. Yeah, this yeah is exactly. And then with a big piece of stone that will fit here, with the rest of the logs of wood. And hammer. And then hammer on this. And then you split. And again, also. Yeah. Drip chalk, man. In many attempts, we can see, like this one over here. Good. Yeah. The weaker line all around, oh, it didn't split, no. but only that part shattered yeah. and the rest. Wow, that's a lot of work. There are a couple of pieces. Yeah. I'm going to take a quick, we'll take a quick look at them now because obviously this, I can't inside, there's no signal. And uh, I think after this, I'm going to head back to the hotel. So I'll probably, once I wrap this stream up, this will be it for the day. But I'm definitely going to try and stream some more uh, as we go forward here. Hello. How are you guys? They got me to say hello. That's what they're after. <laughs> so we look at some of these casing stones here. You kind of get a sense for it. Um, I think we're going in here. Though. Let's see. Yusuf. Yusuf with his buddies.
This is the entrance here. There is another entrance up here. Oh, can you see it? Up there. There's another entrance up there, and in fact, the passage into six. Yeah. This is not that looks like bedrock here. I mean, these are still. No, the bed the bedrock's around the corner. The bedrock corner is is around on the other the other so they side. They still cut all this flat. They still cut all this flat down here. Yeah. So maybe it was, uh, not, not Guys, you want to see the piece? Probably. Huh? Which one? Yeah, sure. The piece of the, of the Casing stone. Yeah, let's look at this first. A piece of the original casing stone is still attached. Of course. So again, you see all the dash lines, the quarry marks. The one that aligns these pieces like that. Here we can see one. But this piece here, so here's an example of some of the massive quarry, the, the granite, the granite casing stones on this pyramid, right? And you can see how they were trying to quarry it. It's that standard dash line that you see in lots of these quarry systems. But this is, give you an idea. And some people say it's just the first course that was, that was quarried. Yusuf seems to think it was the second and there's some academics think it was the se second course as well. But there's a tremendous amount of this is just offcuts, you know. You've got to imagine that this is just the waste pieces that, from the stuff that's been carted away. Yes. Original. Original. And this is, yes, this is attempt or so that's why you see all these pieces here. It's useless for them because it's thin from here and thick from down there. So the piece they were aiming for is this one. Uh, yes. And in many cases, of course, we're been standing, for example, uh, it's all can, gone. Uh, you can see that after they took this piece, the, the one lines. in the back remained, the, the part in the back. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then here is another piece. But two courses of granite surrounding the pyramid, according to the official story, the mortuary and the valley temple were also cased in and out with granite, plus 40 giant pillars. So you can imagine 150. Sorry guys, I just disconnected there for a minute. Beautiful yeah. granite, very high quality. That's a lot to challenge about. Yeah. Why? So the tops of the, fine. Tops of the casing stones, yeah. Um, and I mean, tops of the quarry marks, yeah. Quarry marks. Yeah. Yep, yep. Pharaohs had their priests working here to extract from this, to build with it other structures during the dynastic civilization itself. As I said yesterday, according to the official story, Recycling stone from the Giza Plateau started during yep. the Middle Stream Kingdom, which is around 2100 BC, according to the official mainstream timeline. And we have evidence here left by the priest Ma'i, who was a priest uh, during the New Kingdom, the time of Ramses II. Yep. And can't see he wrote here that he was responsible about see the, glyphs? the king's work. It's the same title that they we are. found actually. For the one supposedly so that's the Rawen, that's the... the but anyway, he took stones from this, from the Gita Plateau, mainly from the Middle Pyramid complex here, and he used it, and this is documented in the official books, he used it in other structures, like the one in Heliopolis, the temple dedicated to Pitah, I mean in Memphis, sorry. Memphis. and another one in Heliopolis. No, it's the car. It's not that. Yeah. Come from a thousand kilometers and, away. Uh, of course, the, the during the time of Ramses the second, huge blocks of what? granite and white calcite crystal and limestone. All of it was extracted from this complex during the New Kingdom time, around 1,300 BC, according. Yeah. To the Small question. Sure. Would, would the uh, stone that was extracted, would it have been uh, used for stru structurally, or would it ever have worked into works of art like some of the, the, the statues? I believe this and that. Like that. I both. believe both can okay. be used. Now. So they, at the time that they were extracting here, they would have been able to work it because it's of its hardness. It's, yeah. they're still well, able to work it. Okay. In the New Kingdom, they had yeah. iron. In too. the Old Kingdom, there are evidence Shaping stone with hand tools. Flint. We have, okay, yeah. we have uh, flint or uh, there are other materials like beryl. Beryl, yeah. yeah. They, can, they can create a chisel with a tip. Same like we do the carbide 
tips yep. and an iron and chisel. So the carbide is, is more yeah. solid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we put like a tip. Like a tooth. In it. Like yeah. a tooth. Yeah. In it. Exactly. Yeah. And this is the one that I didn't know acts that. the hardest yeah. ones, yes. Should we go in? We come. Yep. Me and this man. Let's do it. We Let's do carvings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> stream here is fine. Good stuff. All right, so we're about to roll into the pyramid. I'm going to wrap the stream up here and uh, we'll probably stream again the next few days as we go around and we're well, depending on coverage and stuff. So uh, you guys all have fun. And uh, in honor of Chuck, I'd say you all have a very nice day. Uh, Chuck's here in spirit with us all. So um, yeah, I'm sure he'd love to be here if he could, but uh, he's here in spirit with us. So you guys uh, take it easy and we'll... Um, We'll, uh, we will catch you in the next few days. I'll definitely be, this worked out reasonably well and we'll do this more in the next few days, guys. So take it easy, huh? We'll, uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. And thank you uh, for, for tuning in too. I appreciate everybody viewing this. It'll be on the YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, and we'll do more of it if you like it. I'm, I'm appreciative for, uh, for your eyeballs and for your time. Thanks, guys. Cheers.